All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we actually have the one and only. We got Crazy, the real one, right here, live on the line, man. How are you doing this evening? Hey, man, what's going on, man? My garage going up, trying to go outside. <laughs> I hear you, man. Well, if you don't want me asking, man, well, what's, what's the weather like at where you're at, man? I know down here in Canada, she's getting a tidbit nipply. Yeah, I mean, it's a little breezy right here, but, um... It's kind of warm. I'm outside. I got jeans and a t-shirt. It's like the cool. It's like the cool breeze is blowing right now. Hey man, that's the best way to be, man. It's better than the scorching heat. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but man, I know you're a busy guy, crazy. So I'm going to dive right into this broadcast, man. But first and foremost, I want to take you back to the beginning of your amazing career so far, man, and just ask what actually made you get into the music industry initially. Well, music has always been a part of my culture. You know, um, I grew up in Jersey City, so hip hop was uh was huge back then. And my older brother, which uh, he owns Coca Reef Records, the distribution company, a distro company. You know, he's like he's three he's three and a half years older than us, so he um you know he introduced us to music. A lot of the music he was listening to, uh, he used to be the first person that like, hey, listen to Gangsta, listen to Guru, listen to KRS One. You know, everybody else is just listening to like. The beats, you know, we was kids, we just wanted to dance. We like Michael Jackson and all that. But he, you know, he really introduced us to hip hop. Um, and he made a, he, he made a, he made a rap song when he was like, eight, he was in eighth grade. So I think he was like 12 or 13. And it was dope. He was dissing Che Ali, which was a rap out of New York. And we did the Marion Garden Projects. Um, that's where I grew up at, you know, from eight to, tw- uh, four to 12. So learned a lot in Marion Garden Projects in Jersey City. So yeah, you know, he really introduced us to the culture of hip hop, and you know, we just we 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 you know we clicked with a lot of the artists, you know, Nas and KRS One, Jay Z, um, Wu Tang Clan, the Killer Army, Sons of Man, you know, all those people, and uh, L Cool J. So we just we just love hip hop, you know. We should record ourselves, and so basically, you know, that he really introduced us to it, and then um, I just started freestyling when I was like nine, you know, and after that. I wrote here and there, but I went to the Navy, so I didn't really pursue the career like that. But also as well, man, in April, on April 16th, sorry, of 2018, you actually had the opportunity to perform at the at the event Success Sundays, man. I was wondering if you can tell us a bit more about that event, and of course, right now, do you actually have any up-and-coming performances? Hey, 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 DJ Morty, you, you did your research, my brother. I'm like, April 16th? 2018, you talking about SOBs. Yeah, man. I'm, I just want to say, everybody who's listening, this brother here, man, this brother here does his research on people. Do you understand? Like, he had to really pay attention to somebody to know a specific date when I perform. And it was like, you know, he just did his research and he got, you know, he asked significant questions. So I appreciate that. Hey, man, most definitely, man. It, honestly, man, it, it took, it took me a long time to find that, find that flyer, though. <laughs> hey. It's all good though, but you did it. You know what I mean? It's an interesting question because uh, the guy who was um, the guy who was hosting it, uh, his name is XL, and we actually did. I, I shot my first music video with him back in like 2002. It was on a ship, and I did a song and I performed it at this talent show. But I shot a video for that, and he was the person that shot the video. I got the camera for him. You know, I, I gave him the. Ch- <laughs> I just had, I just had access to some inventory. So I gave him the camera to, you know, to fulfill his dreams, and uh, he was hosting that. And um, my brothers, you know, actually, you know, it was a it was a big event. A lot of my family was there, man. Uh, you know, my lady was there. My my brother, my sister was there. It was like the first time all of us was there at one time. So it brought like a lot of the family together. I performed it. My uncles was a part of it. He was a CEO. You know, I was dressed up. I was dressed up in a jail outfit, and I was, you know, we actually performed the father talking to a, the father writing a letter to the son that was locked, and the father was locked up, and the son was in the street, you know, doing a lot of grimy stuff. So the son wrote wrote a letter back to dad, basically, like, curse his ass out, ripped him up, you feel me? And like, man, who is you? Like, you ain't on the street. So it was a good performance that, uh, you know, every, it was, you know, we kind of acted and everything. We didn't win. But we know, you know, we had a crowd, man. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, those, those shows are really won by a commercial artists. You know, that go open up for somebody else, not conscious music. People ain't looking for conscious music like that. Only in the underground. You know what I'm saying? So 
back then they wasn't looking for that. But um, but it was a great performance, man, and um, yeah, we had fun that night, man. And I have to ask as well, when you actually said you performed that on the shipment, did you actually uh, create uh, that music video on the naval base ship, or did you do that when you actually, uh, sorry, had a homecoming? Nah, it was on the it was on the ship, uh, USS, a USS ship, a uh, United States Navy ship. Um, it was an oiler. We did that. We did that on deployment. Right after September 11th, uh, we deployed like a few months after that, for like seven, six months. It was, yeah, we, we deployed for six months. So we shot the video, you know, doing one of those two deployments because I deployed twice. So we shot the video then on um, doing those one deployments, you know, out there operation. Uh, you know, Iraqi mission, all them, you know, this long war that we had. So we was out in the Gulf, just supplying all other ships and, the, you know, the bases with fuel and, you know, sustenance and stuff like that. So that was, that was our that was our position. But, yeah, we shot it when we was on the point. And also as well, man, you have actually done a substantial amount of work with an individual by the name of Coco Reef, man. I was wondering, how did yourself and him get connected? And, of course, what is it, what is it like working alongside him? Because I know you guys are like, you know, like neck and neck, man. You guys really do a lot of phenomenal work together. Yeah, Co see, Coke is actually my blood brother. That's the one, you know, who who, who introduced us to the music. Um, but we got different minds. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and God work in mysterious ways because He does one aspect, and I do a whole different type of aspect. You know, we're not like stepping on each other's toes, so we able to work. You know, when it comes to the business, when First of all, brothers, you know, we, we have our we have our arguments, you know what I'm saying, because somebody want to do something one way, the other person want to do something the other way. But that's my brother, and I love him to death. Um, and I support what he's doing for the culture. You know what I mean? Like, you know, all the music doesn't align with more mature music because more mature music is a segment we're trying to teach positivity. We're trying to, you know, I don't want to teach no negativity. You know, all the underground artists, some of their lyrics is different. So I still support them. Like, we still play them, you know what I mean? Like, we still support each other, but we make sure that everybody stay in each other's lane. We don't want to step on each other's toes. So that's what we try to achieve, and he done, he's done a lot of work. And, he, and you actually interviewing one of the artists that's, that's coming up um, soon from, uh, you know, Coco Reef Records, man. Uh, another artist, you know, you got he Heaven Razor, which was Hell Razor. You know, his, he got a beautiful documentary, too. So shout out to him. So Coco, you know, Coco's doing a lot for the, for the game, uh, of hip hop and, you know, keep it authentic in the lane that he's in. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's, it's real big, man, that, that, that brothers can come together like that and really, really pursue both of their passions and stay in each other's lane and able to work, you know, fluidly, you know. So if you got a family member out there and you know, you, you know, y'all might have a little bit of differences, but y'all ain't, y'all, y'all not, y'all don't work on each other. You know, y'all not stepping on each other's toes and y'all can support each other's lane, definitely connect with that, you know, because y'all start to build, uh, you know, generational wealth, you know, when when it comes. You know, we ain't see it, we ain't see it yet. We still putting out a lot of money. That's cool. You know, but that's what we're doing. We're on the grind. But we're, we, we're moving in the direction where we know our company is going in individually and collectively. So, you know, shout out to Coco Reef, man. I love him to death. And I got to say as well, man, you, you, like, he does some, like you said, he does some phenomenal work, man. And right along with yourself, he has so many legendary artists signed to his label, man. He definitely is what... I can definitely see that label becoming a top-notch thing, man, in the near future. That's that, that's that's correct, man. We're speaking to two existence. There's two or more gathered, man. They say that it will be. And it's, and it's true because when you... You know, and everybody got to understand, you know, everybody going to have their differences with people. But he's doing a lot for a lot of people. Like, when I say he's doing a lot, he's not charging that much. I told him... As a, as a consultant, you know, his business consultant, you know, that's another role that I play because I want to do the business. But um, I told him he should charge more for the work that he's done and the, and the amount of work that he's done. So, you know, he, he just want to, he don't want to do, he just, he just, he just wants the people to get on, you know, just paying for his short time. And he does a lot by himself. You know, he need a whole army. Um, so I also commend him in doing that because he's so efficient. But he got his hands in a lot. And he also got a Rockwaller, uh, you know, he three Rockwallers too. Um, and he got a family, you know, he got four, four daughters, five daughters, actually, you know, um, and, and he's married. So, you know, that, that takes up a lot. So, you know, just to get his body of work, including with him being a father, you know what I'm saying, husband, and, and, and just trying to be the best he could be, you know what I mean? He, 
everybody got stuff that they can work on. I just want, you know, everybody got stuff that they can work on. He's flawless with the music, you know, and um, he's done a lot of work, and you're right. You know, you know sometimes people want to quit. You know, sometimes it get hard, you know, because some people, you know, they just want to be around just to suck up your energy and see what you got going on. They don't want to bring nothing to the table. Like, a lot of people not doing this research like you. It doesn't matter if you. It doesn't matter if your if your question is the same, and you just doing. It doesn't matter, but you have a process. You know what I'm saying? You you call. You you on time. You respond. Um, you know, some people don't want to pay, but that's cool. Like you doing what you doing. You you interview a lot of people in the game. You know what I mean? I've seen you interview. I seen the Cassidy joint, the Inspector Jack joint, Mona Lisa. You know what I mean? I'm paying. I see with your your body of work as well. You know what I'm saying? And, and this is a. This radio station and this this interview itself is giving everybody the platform just to speak, and you listening, and you listen really really well. But that's another, you know, that's another characteristic that you have that uh maybe some other people need to brush up on. But that's just you know your gift. So I just appreciate that too, man. Hey man, I gotta say I appreciate the love, man, and and that's why I started getting into doing interviews, bro. Just because it sounds bad, the the uh, radio was just so saturated. You know what I mean, like. Uh, there are a lot of great interviewers out there, but the ones that I always came across was the same questions, like, you know, who are your top ten rappers? And, and I'm just like, man, come on, these people have records, man, like new projects, help them sell units. So I just got, I got sick of it, so I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do something, and then, well, shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't think I would uh, get, to the, get to the place I'm at, but I'm just grateful, man, for every opportunity just to be able to interview and speak to amazing individuals like yourself. I mean, I appreciate it, man. You know, I I see what you do. I sort of value in what you was doing, man. That's why, you know, I had a problem, uh, you know what I mean, sending the joints in and, and us conducting the business. You know, uh, uh, and people don't know, it was like, I play, you know, got a few songs on the, on the joint, um, on the spins out there in Canada, and I appreciate the people listening, because I, I always tell people this, right? They always say, well, how many listeners you got? Well, this, you know, artists. I'm like, well, how many listeners can, how many, how, how long, how much you? How much audience do you have, right? If this radio station has five hundred people, that means you're talking to five hundred people. And if you got a message, that means you're talking to five hundred minds. You feel me? That it only take really one mind to like your stuff and share it, and that person to share it, and that person to share it. You feel me? So you got the opportunity to convince five hundred souls whether they want to listen to you some more. Why are you worried about five million? If you that good, then you would you would perform on the one person and figure that person could change your life. I do that. I value everybody, every audience. You know what I'm saying? Because it makes like you got to value that person. That person, like some, it could be one person listening to your show, one person outlaw, and they could change your life. You feel me? I definitely everybody for an interview on this show because I you know there's so many people behind, like even us, me and Coca, and so many people who has with us. There's numerous people that we bring. That's how other people do. You know what I mean? Because you don't know, you don't know the the, the what's, what's behind them. That one individual, that one individual could be more powerful than five million people. And people don't, you know, they gotta value that. They shouldn't even question what you got going on, like anybody. And I know I seen you know a couple times. Like, listen, man, explaining what it is. Like, yo, man, this is a radio station. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like. Like, do your research like I do my research, and you take pride in doing research. I felt that. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, I, you know, I got a piggyback when a man telling the truth. I, I, I got to admit, though, some, sure. some people actually gave me some hate for that, bro. I'm not going to lie. Some, like, not a lot of people. There there was a few people that um, slid in my DM and was like, man, you, you can lose listeners for that. But it's like, but they're not listening. I'm like, uh, I'm like at the end of the I told the guy the truth. I'm like, man, no offense if they're not they're not, if I lose those listeners, they're not really listening because they're calling it a podcast. Exactly. So he, he got exactly. mad and gave me, gave me the whole FF and, you know, boom, you know, we're on the airwaves. So I can't really say what he said, but let's just say he, he, he booted his ass out of my own DM, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, look, just look at it like this, Outlaw. There's going to be some people that agree and be some people that disagree. But, the, I, but, but if I really mess with you, me, I have to look at it like this. If I'm messing with you, I'm messing with your radio station, I've been an interview with you and all that, you know what I'm saying? Even if we might have had, I'm not saying we didn't, you know, we, we probably should have been Gucci. But even if we had a problem and we got through with that, I'm listening, I hear you say that, express yourself. I know you ain't talking to me. 
because I obviously know what's going on. So if somebody's offended, then that means they was offended because you might have hit home. That's my opinion. You know, you might have hit home. You might have you might have touched their spirit because they felt guilty because guess what? It resonated with them. So that's why he's saying you might lose listeners. Well, if I'm losing this, if I'm losing listeners, because I thought you was, I thought you was the homie. I thought you was, you was a supporter of mine. But obviously, you telling me this, that means you're not my true supporter or my friend. I gotta say, that's some real shit. You can tell me, like real talk. You can tell me, like yo, you know, just be careful next time. I can be like yo, you know, I don't, you know, if you care about, it, I can be like if you care about those listeners, you tell them I don't care about them because they ain't really listening and they ain't really you know paying attention. They ain't liking my page. They ain't doing nothing. You gonna interview all these people, bro? It should be like a million people on your Instagram, bro. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Trust like, me, man. I'm I'm trying to hustle to get to that, man. But sometimes it's like listen, scratching and clawing. But I'm gonna keep I listen, going. Listen, bro. It's some stuff. Some stuff needs to be said. And I don't care. That's why they. I'm, I'll keep it real. Some of these artists go on the show and they don't do nothing. They know who they is. They get on their show. They think they bigger than you. Nah, it don't matter. They got on your show. I don't care what artist it is, bro. I don't care who it is. You feel me? Like, you bring something equal to the table like anybody else. That's what I'm trying to say. So, it's all good, though. But you're going gonna to do you gonna do what you got to do anyway. Hey, man, it's most definitely true. But I, I'm, I'm excited to ask you this question, man. You know, I know we were speaking about your, bro, your brother Coke there a few moments ago, man. But the one song that you guys actually did was actually alongside an individual by the name of Rob De Niro, man. And I got I got to ask, man, the song L.A. Takedown, what was it like actually just collaborating with Rob on that phenomenal project? Oh, man, this guy here. <laughs> L.A. Takedown. Man, I'm going to tell you. My Coco Reed been trying to get me to do one of them goodies for a minute. And I've been doing my spiritual joint. I'm on my I'm on my mission with God, but I still I still put it in there. So I still put the lyrics in there. But the beat, you know, one day I'm like, yo, send me a beat, man, I could really, really mess with. It. Like, you know, I could really say something. And then with all the stuff that's been going on, man, and and, and the energy that the, the collaboration that he put, that's that actually I didn't he released that. He released that. I was I was I was Arrested, like I was in jail when you know that you know that happened. There was a whole bunch of stuff happening, like dealing with the law, a whole bunch of stuff happened, man, with me at that time. And I, and it, I think he made it like number two in the underground, one of the underground uh, rankings they had out there in, in the East Coast. But um, man, it was it was just a lot of great energy, and we collaborated really good. And he, and Kobe Reed really he placed he placed all the verses. Like where they, you know, where they should be, and you know, he did the mastering, and he did the production behind it, and he put it together. So, you know, Coco Reed just put that, he put he put that collaboration together. That was all his idea, man. I just did my part. And I gotta say as well, Ben, you know, it must have been such such a surreal moment to actually hear that, especially you know, be being locked down, man. Like me personally, I, I I've I've been locked down as well. I don't really say that publicly very much but you know I, n I never run from my past so just hearing news like that and getting letters and whatnot man is, is definitely the best healing especially being behind them walls man so it must have been just such such a surreal moment to know that it was top in charts yeah yeah it was, it was surreal it gave me some hope man because i was still you know I, i've never been i've never been locked up man you know it was it was something i never i didn't live my life of crime you know what i mean it was just it was just some. Um, Anyway, police is police, man, and you know they they act how they act. But anyway, that's something different. But we ain't talking about that right now. But the collaboration, you know, is uh, you know, it was it was dope. And when I heard it, you know, when I heard the uh, the whole joint, because I heard it over the phone, you know, I really didn't hear it here. Like I heard it over the phone. And, you know, through the, through that security line, you know, it ain't <laughs> it, it, it's not too too well. But I heard it, you know. You know, it was dope, you know, it just, being a part of that, you know what I'm saying, that's when I was really come back into music, too, and, you know, um, and, uh, yeah, everybody, everybody was feeling that joint, you know what I'm saying, so, that gave me some added motivation to continue to do what I do, too. And also, as well, man, you are actually a board member of More Mature Music, I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about that company, and of course, what services do you guys actually offer to the general public to help get the listeners, and of course, the artists that are listening more involved? Right, so more, more mature music is a is a movement. 
So we're moving in a direction where, you know, we were really, um, and the, re- the board member is, you know, we got, we desire nine, but we have five right now. We just had our first meeting um, about the direction of where more mature music is going. So that's like filtering, you know, like you, I'm really looking at paying attention to how, how is this song going to affect my child emotionally or psychologically? You feel me? Is it going to move them to do something negative? Then we really trying to separate more mature music from the, you know, the radio station where we host the show look with the wild 89.1 because that's his radio station and the wild they will get wild on there. So, you know, it got the, his own name, but more mature music is that. So it's basically like living by what you speak of, you know, in any aspect. So with more mature music, we're just trying to live by. Our music is going to be represented by, and we're going to even, you know, we got to carry ourselves. Not got to, but this is what we're saying we are. So, you know, we're just living by the examples of the type of men and, and women that we, we, want to, we want to be around, we want to be, and we want our children to become. You know, kings and queens respect each other, love, man. So we, we, you know, we don't want to be a part of the other side because that's not what I'm saying I represent. That, you know, I would be a hypocrite. So that's what more mature music is. And what we offer is, you know, everybody that's, everybody that subscribes, like an artist, they, um, they get three songs played on a radio station per month. They get one radio interview per month. And they get, you know, 20% off. Everything was in more mature music as far as, like, any events, um, merchandising, you know, that, of that aspect. And they all they all get their own artist page, you know. And they also get access to all the services to provide the branding. To, to They could come out with sneakers, clothes. They got their own hats. We have everything. Distro artists, you know, access to you. You know, they got access to a lot. You know what I'm saying? You know, just it's just, it's just the, the connection. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, you might... You know, it could be the same price, but you know, it's all the, it's all the network. Now you now you register more mature music. You ready? You ready on two radio stations? And you only paid one hundred and ten dollars, and you got you know a couple. You got a couple tracks on this joint, and then you got to send some money. You know, you you already have that. So an artist stepping into an artist stepping into an office already gonna have their music playing on the radio sounds like you know it's tremendous. I mean, unless they get you know unless these artists are getting a uh, um you know. I get spoiled around here, you know, because some people are doing it, you know, on the on the strength. But at the end of the day, you know, you got two worldwide radio stations, you got access to or stuff like that, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so you know, that's what they get. Um, they get a lot, you know. What I mean, they receive a lot because we actually we all work together. You know what I'm saying? And we a network, so we all move. Boom, we do events together, business events. Um, you know, we got. We got kids that we mentoring, and we're gonna, you know, we we, we creating a sponsorship program for that. So it's for everybody. Moment Music isn't like a company, like any record label could sign with it. Any other organization could just register it. It's just a subscription to another directory, another plug, basically. You know, that's like if you had a subscription, I would subscribe to yours. You know, like subscribing to a channel, so to say. So this is another channel through music, but it's more mature music. You know. And we're trying to clean it up. We're trying not to have no profanity. We still do. But, you know, some things are necessary to be said. So we, we ain't there yet. We, but, you know, right now it's more mature and we have a lot of content. Basically, it's content based. Not saying nobody's going to say shit. Nah, you might hear shit on the song. You know, I don't know how to curse on here, but my apologies. Oh, man, we, we, are, we, are most, we are actually fully uncensored, man. So definitely swear away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I, you know, I had to make sure. Hey, man, it's all good. I respect that, man. You know what I mean? At the, at the end of the day, man, like, we're on the FM dial, but, like, you know what I mean? We actually, uh, there, there's some loopholes that I found down here in Canada. I don't really want to discuss it too, too much, but I, I found my way to get us on the FM the FM dial. But the frequency is so low, that's why I make it uh, worldwide on the Internet as well. I mainly promote it as Internet because the frequency is super low just because of the uncensorship. But me personally, I don't think hip-hop should be censored i know with radio there's kids anybody can turn on a dial but when it comes to hip-hop my personal yeah. opinion it's more of a it's more of a way a way of life man individuals use hip-hop to get through their daily struggles and to show you what they lived and what they went through so i don't think that should be censored in my personal opinion yeah yeah you, got, you know you're absolutely right but that's why you know and, and, and i agree with you 
Because hip hop is like a, hip hop is poetry, man. It's like it's like making a movie as well. You know, you're telling the story. A lot of times, telling the story. That's why I said it's profanity. But it's also people telling the story, and the people you know, you got some people who who use hip hop for their, you know, just, just describing themselves, but they have influences on people. You know what I'm saying? So some people do that, but you're right. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be uncensored. There always should be a place where people can go. You know, listen to hip hop wherever. You know what I'm saying? And I, and that's the separate. That's, that's why I say it's like a channel. It's a certain channel. So, so you might have a lot of. You know, you might have people coming out of church and might want to turn on more mature music radio. They could like rap. But guess what? Now they church can't say, "Oh, those cursing." They say, "No, no, no, no." This is more mature music. Oh, okay. So you still get that. Ro- you know, you still get that emotion. You still get all that. The more mature music, on, you know, it's basically like we got a direct audience. You know, you got a target audience. You know, yours uncensored. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to have some people listen to it, some people don't. That's all. And guess what? We got we got Outlaw Radio, Wild 89. You know, we listen to Hot 97 out here or 102, whatever Texas got. You know what I'm saying? So many options. We just, you know, we just an option. We're more mature music. But yeah, man, like, I love the uncensored shit, man, because... You can you can really hear people all, all you know they, they they authentic you know like the interviews out here like it's real authentic and people are real comfortable on here expressing themselves in whatever form you know what I'm saying so that's that, that I appreciate this show this platform because for me hey if we gonna say something we gonna this, this is what we talk we are gonna talk about it right here and I appreciate the question too and your, and your, and your feedback and your perspective too. And also as well, man, leading into this year, I actually noticed as well that December 18th, so coming up next month, right in Philadelphia, you will actually be performing at, at an album release party that is actually going to be hosted by Philly's son of the 215. I was wondering if you can tell us a bit more about that. And of course, where can our listeners actually snag themselves some tickets if they're actually going to be in the Philadelphia area? Okay, okay. All right, to answer your first question, I appreciate you asking that question, my brother. Thank you. Yeah, December 18th is my album, The Truth Stands Alone. It's coming out. But it's more uh, you know, it's more of a collective, like a more mature music, the Wild 89, Copa Reed Records. You know, we're celebrating a, another release. Um, but this is an album that, you know, I chose Philly because I went to the Senate. I was, you know, invited, you know, as an artist and, as a, you know, as a representative of the Wild 89.1 and Copa Reed Records. And I represented and worked hard expecting us. So I represented four organizations there. Um, so I was more playing, you know, I had my table, I had my gear. I'm more of my professional, my, my professional business, you know, uh, mode there. But I also performed, you know, the, given the 10 minutes that I performed. And I, perf- I performed three songs. And I see the way he had it. You know, I see the energy there. Yeah, he's from Philly. But I see it like it kind of reminded me of, you know, the shelter in, in, in Detroit you know, with Eminem. It kind of reminded me of that. Like, everybody performed. You know, the artists, the artists sound good. You know, all the artists sound good. Um, we had women. You know, have you have women that was rappers there, um, R and B singers. People really performed. They danced. You know, they had a good time. It, I, I was a part of a really, really great show, and I like the I like the blueprint that he had. So I said, I want to do my album release here. And um, you know, I've been to Philly a few times. And my father used to live there, and my brother and sister still live there. But um, you know, from my father's side, and uh, I just like the vibe. I like the energy. You know what I'm saying. I like the energy, and um, I, I, I chose the son of the two one five because that's his city. You know, he's up and coming. Um, you know, he he told me I met him three years ago in East Orange, New Jersey, and he told me like, you know, when, you know, it's the plug. You know, you got this spot whenever you want. So he said it. I pick him up on the offer, and let's you know, let's see how it go. You know, let's see how it go. Um, the album is gonna be uh, for the tickets. Um, I got the flyer that's coming out. Got the key code on there. It's, it's real simple. You can go on morematuremusic.com to purchase the tickets right now. But when you see, when you know, the flyers, you got the electronic flyer and flyers as well. You know, we're going to be posting those in the city. But, um, you know, we're going we're gonna to flood the, all the social media, you know, do that um, as well. And uh, we, we talked about that, you know, how we're going to attack that, you know, probably getting the information out there. So it's limited seating, but we also gonna be we also gonna be live that day on a wild eighty nine point one. And I encourage anybody that wanna so we're gonna be looking for artists we looking for artists to perform, producers. Um, you know, we're looking to do some other other things like a DJ battle, but you know, right now we're just gonna be playing the music and having a good time, you know, and doing a networking business, you know, so if you if you got business uh, you know, branding or whatever, you know, it's a good time to, you know, connect with other people because people are gonna be there. Um, we're gonna have a, a recap video, so 
you know, the whole thing is going to be recorded, all the artists, you know. I was just going to do mine a little bit different than what he did. If you saw his recap video, it was dope. Yeah, and it's in Philly, December 18th. It's going to be cold. Bundle up. But, they, you know, we got heat inside. Um, we're going to have a chef there. Chef Antonio going to be there. Um, I already confirmed with him. He locked it in his schedule, December 18th. So, yeah, so we, we're going to, you know, we're going to bring all the business people out there. We're going to bring the artists out there. We're going to cope with records out there, the Wild 89.1. Um, you know, and whoever else want to be a part of it, man. So we're just trying to do something big for the culture and just continue with, you know, continue on with, with this set and, uh, and a lot of it on that versus battle. You know, they, they put the energy out there and we just maintain it. You saw KRS1 and Big Daddy Kane, you know, they, they, they whipped the stage. Um, you know, and, and there's numerous other artists that went on there snoop, snooping. I think X was on there one time. You know, so other people doing their thing, but, you know, we're just keeping up with the energy of, of the season, the season that we in, and we just introducing, you know, what we got, man. Our arsenal, you know, we got a, we got a lot. We got a lot in our, in our tank. We got a lot for people to listen to. They can still listen to it now, you know, on the radio stations, you know, plays on, like, you know, radio station like yourself. So, but, yeah, plug in, man. We, we You know, we're excited about that day. We um we work hard and we we we've been working really hard three and a half years. I put a lot of money into this project. Um, that's why I'm you know I'm gonna promote it so heavy, do a tour and everything. Cause man, look, <laughs> hey, this is personal money. You know what I say? It's, it's six figures I put into this album. And also as well, man, I have to ask, what is next for yourself? crazy the real one man is there anything we happen to miss during this broadcast anything else you still want to talk about or promote well we still got you here live on the canadian fm dial this evening yeah you know momentummusic.com i encourage people to take a peek at it you know if you love music or you know you, you just want to see what other artists got you know check momentummusic.com and artists definitely register for that you get a lot of things for your book um another website is a networking website um you know, I'm a co I'm a part owner of that one. St. Gummin is a networking website where basically like, you know, if you think about it, a lot of people from the hood, from the streets, or from low power, anybody, you know, just you know, want to start a business or they starting businesses and you know, that's where they that's where they go to, to network. So it's like a network directory of Saint Gutman and that's S A N and like a Nancy K T and then G U T M as in Mike A N N November November. Dot com, uh, but you can see it on you know you can see it on the on the Instagram, and I also got a book coming out with the album, so the album got sixteen songs, it's gonna be sixteen chapters of the book, um, you know, and, and all of that it's, it's a story, you know, it's a story, crazy the real one, um, and the, the sort of book is also dropping out with the album, but that should be coming uh, beginning of two thousand twenty two. And also as well, man, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that does slide into the radio station airwaves. Just like a chance to give like shout outs to whomever they want to give shout outs to. But most of all, man, your social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you and stay more updated on Crazy the Real One if they're not already doing so. Uh, I say um for the IG, more mature music. It's just like that, more mature music, and then um uh, the wild eighty nine point one FM. And you could get the person who won from there. Um, there has to be four different ones. And then uh, the website as well, mormontrollmusic.com. But I want to give a shout-out to my grandmother. Um, my grandmother has taught us a lot. And and, and, it, and this is going to go for my whole family, Gaines, Lopez, everybody. You know, St. Gummy, Mom and Chill Music, The Wild 89.1, because this is a big family. You give a shout-out to you, the culture, everybody listening to the fans of the world, period. Um, but most importantly, like, I thank God for everything. You know, you, like... I tell people, man, like whatever it is, man, you believe. If you believe in your, if you believe in self, then, then you know you know that that's the creator within you. So that's cool. You know, I mean, I just get thanks to them. Whoever gave me life, and my grandmother showed us a lot. You know, right now she's in the hospital, and um, you know, the hospital actually called my family and told and told them that my grandmother had passed away, and uh, and when so everybody thought that this morning, this morning this happened. So this morning, and then my my grand my mother went to the hospital, and they made a mistake. They called the wrong family, you know. And that did that did something to the that did something to people emotional, you know. One, how do we value life? But uh, what my grandmother taught us that, you know, she forgave everybody. She loved everybody. Like she loves everybody. Like 
Like, love everybody, man. And it don't matter. You was divorced, you know. She kept 100 with people. She always went to visit everybody. She always made sure she spent time with people. So she valued people, man. And, she, you know, she didn't judge nobody, man. You know, what your past behaviors and none of that. You know, she might, you know, she might have told you something if you was wrong, but that was cool. But she still loved you. You know, being that she'd been in the hospital for a minute. There's a lot of people who didn't take the time to go see her. You know what I'm saying? That made some people in the family feel some type of way because of her character. So I just want to say shout out to my grandmother. Her name is Maria Reyes. You know, uh, you know, God bless her. She's fighting strong. She's the strongest woman alive. And, um, you know, shout out to her. And everybody know the umbrella under that goes to them too. And shout out to everybody, man. And I got to say as well, man, most definitely prayers go out to your grandma, man. I hope she makes a full recovery and gets back on her own two feet very, very soon, man. She sounds like a phenomenal individual. Yep. And shout out to my uh, my kids, man, my, and my wife to be with me, man. So shout out to them because they without them, I couldn't do this music because they sacrifice a lot. You know, they, my kids might feel some type of way sometimes, but I tell them, hey, I'm on a, I'm on a mission. Um, this is my mission and this is my date. You know, after that date, boom, you know, I make sure, you know, I got to stick to those dates. But, you know, shout out to them as well, man. You know, I, I love you guys. But I got to say, Crazy, thank you so much, man, for just taking the time out of your busy evening and just sliding into the uh, sliding into the 97.7 FM airwaves this evening, man. It definitely was an honor and most definitely a privilege, man. And I'm quite sure we definitely will talk again quite soon. Yes, sir. I appreciate you, man. God bless you. Uh, take it easy, my brother. You as well, brother. Thank you so much, man. Have yourself a wonderful night. All right, peace.